All right, today we're going to look at uh, making the robot a little bit smarter than the one we made in the last video. Um, we're going to be using the same robot and not changing the robot at all, but we're just going to make the robot drive a little bit smarter. Now, on the last robot we made, he just used the sensor to see whether he was on the black or on the white. If he was on the white, he turned towards the black. If he was on the black, he turned back towards the white. And he always turned the same amount. Today what we're going to do is we're going to do proportional control. If that's exactly where we want, if he's only off a little bit, he doesn't need to turn really hard, he only needs to turn a little bit. If he's off a long way, well then he needs to turn back quite hard. And same when it goes over the black. If it's only just that little bit over the black, it only needs to turn out a little bit. If it's a long way over the black, then it needs to turn out quite a lot. So, the amount we steer will be proportional to how far off centre we are. So in order to do that, first thing is we need to know what the centre output is when it's halfway, halfway over the 2. Now we can do that by just simply putting it halfway over the 2 and reading the value on the port view. But a much better way of doing it is, is if we read the value over the white and read the value over the black and then work out what the halfway point is in between. So in order to do that, we'll go to the port view on the robot. All right, and we can go through sideways through the menus by pressing either side button. Then we want to select something, we press the center button. If we want to go back, we press the top button. So what we'll do is, if I can get a camera here. Here we go, so we'll go across, across, till I'm getting onto this third menu here, that's port view. The very first one at the top there is actual port view. If I select on that, it's telling me color reflect 93% on um, port 1. So you see right at the very beginning there, you'll see it says port 1, color reflect 93%. So that tells me when it's over the white, it reads 93%. If I shift that till I'm over the black, over the black now, it tells me 15%. Okay, our primary school mathematics will tell us to find the midpoint between two numbers. You add the two numbers together and then divide by 2. So 15 plus 93 divided by 2 will give us 54. So we know any time the sensor is reading 54, it must be exactly half over the black and half over the white. We will call this our set point. Our set point is what we're trying to achieve. Now our error will be how far our sensor reading is from the set point. So to work out our error, we can just go sensor reading minus set point. And then we need to steer proportionally to our error. So we need to be able to scale that up or scale it down to get the correct steering. So we'll say steering is equal to error multiplied by our scaling factor. If we multiply it by 1, it doesn't get scaled at all. If we multiply it by a number larger than 1, it becomes bigger. I.e. if we multiply it by 2, it becomes twice as big. If we multiply it by a number smaller than 1, like 0.5, it will become half as big as it once was. Okay, let's have a look at the code. It's not as complex as what you think. First of all, we're going to need a loop because we need it to do it over and over and over. And we're going to set our loop to infinite so it does it forevermore. Then we need to pull out a color sensor block that reads the color sensor. We need to make sure that we have the port set to the correct port. For me, I have my color sensor plugged in port one. Then we need to set the sensor that it's going to read reflected light. And then we need to pull out our mass block and set our mass block to minus and we're going to pull out the output of the sensor into the A and then we're going to set the B to our set point which in my case is 54. Then we pull out another mass block and set it to multiplication and we're going to pull the output of the first mass block and put it into the A of the next mass block and then we're going to set our scaling factor. With some experimentation I found the best size scaling factor for my particular robot for the shape and the size of the wheels and the spacing was 2.18. You'll have to do some experimenting with your own robot. 
If you find the robot is falling off the line, then you need to make the scaling factor bigger to make the robot turn tighter. If the robot is turning too much, but not falling off the line, but it's just turning a whole heap, you need to reduce the size of that scaling factor. Then we just put the output that into the steering block. We're going to set the steering block to be turned on continuously. We're just going to use our 30 power, and we're also going to ensure that we have our ports set correctly. On my particular robot, I have the left motor plugged into port A, and the right motor plugged into port B. So how the program works is, we read the value out of the color sensor, we minus 54 off it, which is my set point, then we multiply it by our scaling factor. I found best scaling factor for my robot was 2.18, and then we steer via that, and then we just go around and loop doing that over and over and over and over. So now we're going to do some runs, and we're going to test our proportional controller to our on-off controller. Now hopefully, the proportional controller is much faster, being much more efficient, i.e. it shouldn't wiggle around as much because it only turns the amount that it detects that it needs to turn, whereas the on-off controller always turns the full amount. Both robots have the same motor speed of 30. I haven't changed the motor speed, I've just changed the way the robot follows the line. See the proportional? He detects that there's no error, or very little error, and ends up quite smooth down around there. And the error sort of settles himself down, and he comes around to there.